This is Share the Vision, presented by the Resource Center. A discussion of the programs and services of the Resource Center and about issues related to individuals with disabilities. Today, Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center, joins me. It is almost Thanksgiving week. Steve, what should we talk about on the Share the Vision radio show? Toys for Tots. That's right. Every year at this time, we come and begin the Toys for Tots season with joy and zeal and snow and cold and wind and the spirit of Christmas. And we've got all of those this year. Absolutely. Now, people will notice we have new acoustics. We'll introduce the new Toy Central in a moment. But first, Steve, as we begin this show for the 15th year for Toys for Tots, coordinated by the Resource Center here in Chautauqua County, your thoughts, your feelings, your hopes... (laughs) <laughs> uh, we absolutely hope that we have lots of people who get full of the Christmas spirit, and when they're heading out this Friday for their Black Friday shopping, that they'll remember to pick up something to help those who are less fortunate in our community. We'll get into some details, but as you pointed out, we've been doing this for 15, 15 years. The Resource Center has been coordinating the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve's Toys for Tots Drive in Chautauqua County, and we are able to make the holidays brighter for 2,300 kids or so every year, and it's thanks to the generosity of the community that we're able to do that. So it is really a joy, truly a joy. It was slightly facetious as we started, but those of us who are in the room here have done this broadcast many times, about to join me. Terry Johnson and Heather Brown, the coordinators of Toys for Tots for the Resource Center, and the special guest that Terry will introduce next to introduce the new Toy Central location. But first, Terry, a joy to be back on the air with you. Thank you. We're so happy to do this show every year. It's, it's nice for us to get away from the hustle and bustle of work and do some toy business. Toy business. I will ask you the same question that I did, Steve, in terms of anticipating this 15th year and what's going to happen between now and the week before Christmas. Your sense, your feelings, Terry Johnson. Well, I think our sense right now is we're off to a really good start for the season as early as we are. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Just be, just because of we're kind of coordinating our efforts a little bit differently this year. So we feel like we're a little bit more organized, and Heather and I keep saying this is going to be our best year yet. We're confident that be- between the help of the community and all of our volunteers that we're going to really have a good year this year. I'm going to come back in a moment and stand with both you and Heather and talk about your joint efforts as coordinators for Toys for Tots. But first, we are at a new location. There's a new Toy Central, a new place for applications this year, and I want to tell the world where we are broadcasting from right now and introduce the person who is hosting us at this beautiful place. Okay, we are so, so fortunate this year that we are new Toy Central for the year is the Gateway Center on 31 Water Street. And we have Pastor Amy from Community Helping Hands here to talk to us a little bit about our collaboration and working here. And we're so happy to have a new site and, and be able to work where we know there's a lot of people coming in that can benefit from more than just toys but other services that are offered here. We'll be back to you and Heather in a moment. But first, Pastor Amy, Amy Roller. Welcome back to the radio. A joy to see you again here at the Gateway Center. It's great to be here. I'm really excited about this project. And let me echo the thanks that uh, Terry already has uh, presented, given to you for hosting Toys for Tots, making this Toy Central for this year. Yeah, I think it's kind of a natural partnership in a lot of ways. We're a helping organization. We help a lot of people at Christmas, and we have a lot of space as well at the Gateway Center. And it just, I think, made sense that uh, Toy Central will be here this year, not only for the storage of the toys that are collected, but also the distribution and application as well. Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself into? <laughs> I'll be honest, I do not. <laughs> But I can imagine. I can definitely imagine. We know a lot about Christmas around here. We're actually broadcasting from our Christmas shop that we do every December and surrounded already by decorations and trees and trains and uh, Santa Clauses and every Christmas thing you can imagine. I guess my response to that is that, and I've done this for 15 years, you hear me choke up a little, it always gets to me because there is so much excitement and joy and so much volunteer cooperation for Toys for Tots. You are a pastor, you work with people who are volunteers and those in need all the time, but I bet, Amy Roller, this one will get to you at some moments the same way that it gets to me every single year, but... Before we let that emotion go any further, 
We are here at the Gateway Center. This is a huge building, the former Chautauqua Hardware. Just a moment for all that happens in this facility, uh, the, uh, your part and everybody else's, just so that the community knows more about the new home for Toys for Tots. Well, as many people know, the Gateway Center is the building, but there are multiple organizations here, most of whom are not-for-profits or in the business of helping people. Community Helping Hands is here. We run Family and Youth Center We operate a thrift store that allows people to receive emergency help for clothing, furniture, and household items. Love, Inc. is located here. St. Susan Center, which is a soup kitchen, and they feed, on average, around 300 people a day, 363 days a year. BOCES does ESL programs, adult education, tape testing, GED classes. Mental Health Association is located here. This is also a distribution site for the Food Bank of Western New York. So as you can see, it really does make sense that the Resource Center, who is also about helping people, and I think Christmas, you get choked up about it, but when we think about Christmas, we think about meeting not just a physical need, but an emotional need. And a lot of us, even though we're often meeting physical needs. There's a deeper emotional need underneath all of that, and that sort of hits us at Christmas time, especially when we think about being able to provide gifts for our children or decorations for our homes. Not everybody has the money to afford that, and I think that's where something like Toys for Tots really fills a, a pretty important need. Wow, that was very eloquently said, uh, Amy, and thank you for that. Where will you put Toys for Tots in the midst of all of this? You, you still have some room left for the thousands of toys that they are going to bring to this place. This is a very big building, and I'm not going to reveal the secret location where the toys are being stored, um, but we have you. thousands of square feet that actually are unused space, still very much like it was when it was a factory. And so there's a space in the building where the toys will be stored and organized, but when it comes to the actual distribution, that's going to happen on the first floor where there's easy access for people, and I'm sure Heather and Terry will be able to explain that much better than I can. Thank you very much, Amy. If you want to chime in on any other part of this during the program, I'll be happy to give the microphone back to you, but as promised, I'm going to come here and stand between Terry Johnson and Heather Brown, the two coordinators for Toys for Tots. Heather, we haven't had a chance to say hello to you on the air yet for this uh, first broadcast for Toys for Tots this year, but a season's greetings. Merry Christmas. We're just a few short weeks away, it seems. Pardon me a second. Ah! <laughs> you don't have your shopping done yet. We talk about this every, every year, year, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. You'd think you would start. <laughs> I might start here in Amy's store, but the <laughs> introductory feelings, um, perspectives as we begin this 15th year of Toy Story Tots, you do together with the community, uh, Heather Brown. Well, I, you know, I think echoing on what, what Pastor Amy said is the mission of the program from the Marine Corps Reserve is that hope is key. You know, it might be just about a physical toy, but when you read their foundation and their mission statement, the key statement is hope is key. We all have Christmas memories of opening that one package and having a, you know, a messy living room, but it's really the joy that we're able to bring to a family, to a child, that there is hope. They might not have a lot of other resources. They might not have a lot of additional capacity. So it's just that one extra thing. I mean, we're not giving away boatloads. It's a toy and a small item that just hopefully is going to go a really, really long way. And we hope that we have the the capacity and the community support to do this again for the 15th year. And you give me the opportunity to uh, present this information, which we've done every year, but it's important to reestablish how the Marine Corps Reserves is tied up in Toys for Tots and how the Resource Center is. If you'd speak to those two points. Sure, sure. We're what's called a local community organization. We aren't Marines. We never have been in the Marines. But what happened 15 years ago is... Is there was a gap, actually, in this community that was identified just a few weeks before Christmas. A few of the staff that worked for us at the Resource Center and worked with families that were in need found out about Toys for Tots via the Internet and realized the closest group was up in the Niagara Falls and Buffalo area. And we had about nine families that first year that we were able to, just within about a week before Christmas, actually go to Niagara Falls, partner with their program, and bring toys down here. And we did that a few years, and then they actually asked 
asked if we would be interested in developing a bigger program in Chautauqua County because there wasn't a Marine Corps Reserve unit here, and they had this other option called a local community organization. So we said, sure. How big could it get? We were serving 9, 12, 15 families those first years, so we signed on and signed the paperwork and said, sure, we'll be a local community organization. It fits right in with the Resource Center's mission of making a difference in people's lives. Well, 14 years later, it grew extremely quickly to over 2,000 children within year five and year six. So that was that was our connection, and it really it was just part of a few employees at the Resource Center getting families, friends, other volunteers, volunteers and and just kind of saying, hey, we're going to do this. How many children, how many families last year? What do you anticipate for this year? Do you have any sense of that? Well, the last few years, we seem to have plateaued between about 2,200 to 2,300 children, and that's about 900, 950 families. You know, we had a big trend increase years, probably 3 to 12. The last two years have been right in that range. I'm not quite sure. Every year, we kind of wonder, is the economy getting better? Has Has it leveled off? Will the location make a difference this year? There's a lot of uncertainty and and variables out there. And I think that's what leads to the anxiety and the angst of will we have enough because we don't know what enough is. Yeah, that, that's hope, and you have to hope in another way. <laughs> we do, we do. We hope, as we've been putting the barrel sites out this last week and, and last week, that they're going to be full and that every Wednesday and Saturday when we pick up the donations, that every box is going to be full at every site. I want to go back to Terry in just a moment, but speak to the Marine Corps Reserves and uh, the, the, the uh, contribution, the, the sort of umbrella organization that supports this all across the country. Right. All across the country, there are the Marine Corps Reserve units, and we kind of answer to the foundation. Terry had the opportunity to actually go to the official foundation training this year and can probably give you some fun tidbits. But they they do all of the overall work with the website, for example, with the printing materials, with the posters. They get the national sponsors like the Toys R Us. So if you go into a major chain that you find consistent all over the area, that's the work of the foundation doing that. And we have to answer to all of their standard operating procedures and whatnot as kind of the parent company. Heather Brown, one of the coordinators for Toys for Tots, going to switch back now to Terry Johnson. Pick up the story, Terry. What do we need to put in at this moment? I think in line with us being affiliated with the Marine Corps Reserve, when I went to the training back in September, there was a lot of information shared with us as far as the national sponsors and different requirements of local community organizations and the active marine units as far as what is expected and how to run your campaigns. And, you know, we kind of started on our own and came up with our own rules along the way. And what we found is we're right on target with how we're supposed to be doing it. So that was good good information to have. But there's a lot of reporting and tracking that we do that goes back to the Marine and the Marine Foundation. And they give us a lot of materials and equipment and some of the national sponsors, we get resources from them. For example, Toys R Us is a national sponsor, and we get money each year. It's donated from Toys R Us that we that we use in their store, and we get toys that are collected at the Toys R Us in Blaisdell, which we can't quite get to today, but we do get the toys that are collected at that site, so we're assigned our own Toys R Us store to do the collections from. That's the voice of Terry Johnson, one of the coordinators for Toys for Tots from the Resource Center, joining us on Share the Vision today. Also on this program, Heather Brown, the other Toys for Tots coordinator, Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center, and Amy Roller, Executive Director of Community Helping Hands at the Gateway Center in Jamestown, the new Toy Central for Toys for Tots this year. We'll be back to more of our show in just a moment. Looking for quality primary care in the Jamestown area? TRC Health Services is accepting new patients. TRC Health Services has provided primary care to our community for 20 years. TRC Health Services has an experienced team of health providers, offers fast scheduling of appointments, off-street parking, and bilingual staff, and they can bill most insurances. TRC Health Services, 890 East 2nd Street. Call 661-1447. That's 661-1447. Recorded at the Gateway Center, Water Street, Jamestown, you're listening to Share the Vision on WJTN for Toys for Tots. Now, I I, want to ask, how does Toys for Tots work? But I think I'm going to hold that question for a moment and... Uh, or ask it in another way. What, as this program hits the air, as Toys for Tots begins this year, can people do to help you in any way? 
Terry. The first and probably most obvious way is to drop a toy in one of our collection boxes. We're really, really relying on the community support to help us with that, as we do every year. And we have a lot of box sites that Heather can get into some of them for you in a minute. But we also look for volunteers. We need volunteers to adopt the boxes, to be the responsible to get the boxes out and bring the toys to us, because Heather and I are two people. We can't be going out to 80 places and collecting all of the toys ourselves, so we really, really rely on volunteers. We need volunteers to help us sort the toys as they come in. We need volunteers to help us bag and distribute the toys as we get closer to the, to the end of the season. How do people volunteer? They can call either myself or Heather. I can be reached at 661-1433, and Heather can be reached at 661-1042. Now, how can community organizations, not-for-profit social groups, how can they help with Toys for Tots? We're, you know, we always are looking for organizations that are willing to either one volunteer. Again, just like anybody else, we have a lot of people that volunteer and come help us on our bagging and distribution days and have groups of Girl Scouts or Boy Scout troops. And it's a good activity for kids to kind of experience what it's like to give back. And I know my son personally enjoys to be able to help and, and give back to other kids that might not have what he has. And also for their holiday parties or, or gatherings, meetings that they have around the holidays to encourage them to, instead of doing a $5 gift exchange, with somebody as part of their club to bring a gift to donate to Toys for Tots in lieu of that $5 gift exchange that they may or may not have a use for. So we're getting more and more relationships built up like that. And the other thing we're trying to offer for people this year is to do challenges amongst like groups. For example, there's a group of small salons, and I wish I had the names of all of them in my head, but I don't, but a group of small salons that are Mm -hmm. challenging each other to try to collect, and whichever one collects the most toys at their site. We've had a volunteer that's offered to have a pizza party for whichever salon has the most toys. So challenges like that amongst like groups that can gather toys and and, um, work together like that. How can businesses get involved? Otherwise, you just mentioned one way, and that is small businesses competing against another. Are there other ways that businesses can get involved at any level to help you at Toys for Tots? Uh, you know, again, donations, monetary donations, toy donations, or volunteering is really a, the, the biggest support that we can get right now. And I'll go back to my original question, and you, uh, or Heather, or both of you can take this one. How does Toys for Tots work? <laughs> That's such a loaded question. (laughs) We accept applications from people. We either get them from local social service agencies that can send referrals to us of people, families that they know that are in need, or we have walk-in application days where people can come in and sign up for toys. And then as we get closer to the holiday season, we have a date where we come and we sort all of the toys out. And then we bag them all up per family, and then either the case managers that made the referrals come and pick up the toys and give them directly to their families, or the individuals come and pick up their items themselves. Okay. And how do you know, Heather, if you're going to have the right toys and the right number of toys for the children for whom applications have been placed? Well, we never do for sure, and that's kind of part of the getting things all set up. The next few weeks as we set up our Toy Central, we'll set it up to look like a store. You know, we'll put the baby gifts together and the Barbie dolls together and the basketballs together and just kind of hope that we have enough for the right age categories. I think what it comes down to is those volunteers that come that last weekend to help us bag the toys. You know, the joy on their faces, they take a piece of paper that has a couple kids' names on it that they have no idea who they are. You know, Bobby is two and Susie's eight and little Tommy is 12. And they take that and they walk around this store that we set up and they take such time and patience and energy and excitement to pick the right toy to put in a bag for those children who they never have met and never will meet. And you know what? It works out. And you'll hear volunteers talking about, oh, do you think they'd like this or do you think they'd like that? And getting excited about it. They've never met those people. And you kind of get that real cool synergy going on between the volunteers. And sometimes we will have kids or we'll have the high school key club come down and you'll get an opinion. You're like, hey, are you 10 years old? Do you think a 10 year old would like this and it's just it's the best weekend that we have and somehow at the end it all works out 
That's about how it works. <laughs> you have a list of businesses and supporting groups, and if there's anybody that uh, you want to make sure it gets mentioned at this point for the effort that they have put forth this year uh, or the special things that they are doing, I want to give you that opportunity. You know, and it's hard. We have about 80, so there's no way I can mention everyone, but we have the big lots. They've been longtime supporters. All of the Dollar General stores, they're a corporate sponsor, Cummings Engine, Chautauqua Institute, the Tim Hortons locations, a lot of small businesses a lot of chains, Red Lobster, several of the schools, a couple stores in the mall if you want to go up to Sears in the mall. They're a new partner this year that's going to have a box. All of the resource center locations, Walgreens are a corporate sponsor. You can't miss the boxes. They're a big white box that has the logo on them. The Woodlawn Credit Unions in Dunkirk and Lakewood, both YMCAs. And if you can't find them, you can go to the Toys for Tots website and you meander to the Chautauqua County section of that, and we have all of the box sites listed on that website. But pretty much just look for them. There are about 80 of them out and about. Okay, I'm going to go back to Terry in a moment, but is there anything else, anybody else that you want to mention uh, in terms of groups, organizations, major supporters? Yeah, so far this year, and we'll probably get more of these and, and be listing them on the website, but we have two big events going on this year. This is the second year that Ed Schultz Ford down in the corner of Fluvanna is doing a Fill the Ford promotion. And they will be filling a big Ford truck with toys. They'll be advertising that very shortly. And then Zbart, also down on Fluvanna. Fluvanna, is also doing a Fill the Deuce. If you've ever seen, I didn't know what a deuce was. I had to be educated. But it's a big kind of military-like vehicle that they have oftentimes parked out the store. They're going to be filling the deuce between December 1st and December 6th. So stop by and visit Z-Bar and bring a toy. And I think they'll have some promotional opportunities that are tied to that and be running some ads. So two really big groups that have stepped up in addition to several of the local clubs. The Lakewood Rod and Gun Women's Auxiliary. I, th- I meant to look, but I think they've been donating to us at least 12 or 13 years out of the 15 years. I go to the Women's Auxiliary Party in early December. The Cellar and Moose is joining that this year, along with Stell has a party at the Cellar and Legion and invited us to come and said that they probably will be collecting over 80 toys. So a lot of groups like that are stepping up. Back quickly to Terry Johnson for a couple of things. One, uh, in terms of special events, there's always a parade. The Resource Center is always a part of it. We've got to make sure we get that in. Yes, December 5th, and the theme is a winter wonderland. So we are already well on our way to having our float complete. I saw a big chunk of it today, so I'm not going to give away what our secret is, but it's going to be nice. And, of course, people can take toys to the parade if they don't take them elsewhere to be donated for Toys for Tots this year. Absolutely. We never turn away a toy. Sign up here at Toy Central at the Gateway Center for those people who are not, who, who may be eligible or their children may be, but they've not been reached by any other social service organization. Yep, we have two dates, if they're not being referred elsewhere, that people can come down to the Gateway Center at 31 Water Street to sign up, and two dates in Jamestown, which the first one is Friday, December 5th, so they can come here and sign up before the parade. And that is from 1 p.m. until 4. And the next is the next Saturday morning, December 6th, from 9 a.m. until noon. And they can come here. And what they need to make sure that they have with them is identification for themselves, the kids that they're signing up, and proof of household income. So if they have all of that with them, it's a pretty quick process as long as they have all of their papers. They fill out the application. We verify all of that information, and they're on their way and are given a date to come back in time and pick up the toys. Any other special events that you want to mention before I ask a few more questions to conclude here? I just want to bring up the Dunkirk Application Day as well. We have a day Thursday, December 4th in Dunkirk at 186 Lakeshore Drive, and that's from noon to 3, and again, the same information that they need to bring with them. Earlier in this program, you said you hope people would purchase a toy and put it in the box. What toy? Any toy, specific needs that you want to mention right now, Terry? You know, over the years, we've focused so much on the infants and the teenagers because that's always an area that we struggle every year. And we focus so much on that with our own shopping efforts and with getting that message out that I think at this point, we are kind of like at anything that piques your interest, we would like you to buy instead of focusing on that age group because we've had so many people focus on those age groups that we don't want to lose out in that middle range between like <laughs> 4 and 12. So I would say anything, if you look at it and you think a kid's going to enjoy opening that on Christmas morning, I would suggest making that be the toy that you buy. We have put out a lot of information over the last two minutes on this program. And once again, if people want to recap or they want to contact either one of you, Terry, your telephone number. 
661-1433. And Heather Braun. 661-1042. We also have an email address that new this year, and it's a preferred source for people if they need to email us, and it's accessed by both Heather and I, and it's toysfortots at resourcecenter.org. Toys for Tots at resourcecenter.org. Yes. I'm going to step back now to uh, Pastor Amy, Amy Roller, the Executive Director of Community Helping Hands here at the Gateway Center. What have you learned? What's your sense of all of this now? I'm really excited about it. And I might not have been listening the whole time, but did you say that you really only wanted brand new toys, right? And I'm not sure that that was mentioned, not used toys, right? Okay. And unwrapped. Okay. New unwrapped toys. Thank you. I'm a newbie, so I, I think about it differently. <laughs> well, thank you for making sure that we got that information out there, too. And thank you again for uh, allowing Toys for Tots to come and be a part of all that you do here. Well, I'm really excited that, that the Resource Center does this for the community. It's a really fun, enjoyable, wonderful event. So well, thank you. And thank you to you and the volunteers and the employees here at uh, Community Helping Hands for your commitment to the community. Back to Steve Watterson to close this up. Uh, Steve, uh, just to make sure that we have not left any Anything out uh, of uh, our appeal, our presentation of Toys for Tots as it begins for this 15th year. Any th- wrinkles we haven't ironed out here? No, I think you covered everything. I mean, to reiterate, this is a, a way that the Resource Center can give back to the community. You know, we rely on the community support all year long for uh, the, those services that we provide to people with disabilities. And uh, this is a way that we, I mean, we, we show our appreciation all year long. Uh, we have individuals with disabilities. Uh, with support staff who volunteer at dozens of local uh, not-for-profit organizations. But this is a a big way that we can uh, really uh, fill a need and do something that benefits a a big chunk of our community every year. And there's an extraordinary number of resource center consumers and employees who catch the spirit of this like the rest of us do and are in here volunteering or uh, bagging toys or helping in some way. It's hard not to get charged up and excited, right? So everybody wants to be, you know, and when you've got a successful event, I mean, everybody wants to be involved with a winner, and this is obviously a winner. So everybody loves it. Also with the parade, uh, you know, we have a float every year in it, and we certainly would encourage anybody who wants to uh, walk along with us to come down with us. One of the advantages of the Resource Center being uh, the co-sponsor of the parade is we get to be up near the front. So if it's a freezing cold night, we get to finish up early and we can either then uh, you can go and find someplace warm and or uh, get to go back and, and see the rest of the parade procession come through. Well, again, we encourage you, radio listeners, to become involved as an individual, a group, organization, family, some way in Toys for Tots. Contact. If you didn't get the phone numbers, you can just dial the regular resource center number and ask to leave a message for Terry Johnson or Heather Brown uh, and become a part of this year's Toys for Tots campaign. To all of you, Steve and the coordinators for your many, many years of uh, service here, both to Heather and Terry and to Pastor Amy, thank you all for sharing the vision today.